All right, Soul Render Dormazane. Um, you can go to either Remnant or Soul Render. With the Mass Dispel being nerfed, Soul Render might actually be easier. Not entirely sure though. We'll see where guilds go um, next few weeks. But Soul Render and Remnant are about the same difficulty. So you can go to either one. Double Blood DK, super useful. Um, if you don't have. I'll, I'll talk about it when we get to Remnant. So on the Soul Render, Double Blood DK, extremely useful for grouping up mobs. If you don't have Double Blood DK, then you want to run one Blood DK, one DPS DK. It can also work. Uh, but just having two DKs is huge on this fight. If you don't have two DKs, it's going to be a little bit more difficult grouping everything up um, and dealing with the adds. Um, four healers, just run five healers. There's the damage check on this fight is not that important. Um, we made it week one with barely any split gear. Uh, week two and forward, the damage check on this fight is pretty lenient. So you just run five healers because the chain breaks. Um, and just in general, you take a lot of damage on this fight. This fight is just down to timings. Big things that you want to have set up on this fight are a lock gate. So you want a lock gate from between the first two rows here, going this way. Um, and this is for chain breaks. Ideally, you want to be able to gate, and the distance of the gate will break your chain. You don't want to have to do any extra running. Um, the three chains, Spawn there, there, and there. Um, so the reason you have the lock gate between the first and second one is because the third person has some time to like pick up their chain, run to the lock gate, then take it in the time that the first two are snapping their chains. The first person should pick up and immediately gate. Second person, as soon as the second, the first person gated, the explosion went off, healers call for second person to go, then you gate, um, and third person does the same. So you pretty much just want to stagger the chain explosions by a couple seconds, but you want to do all of them fairly quickly if you're running like this Priest Holy Paladins. Um, if you're running some different healer comp that has more sustained healing, it's a bit less important. Uh, but Disc Priests do all of their healing in a very short time window, so you want to break those chains within the Disc Priest ramp, um, or like while they're ramped. Um, so that's for chains. There's nothing else that you really need to assign for chain breaks. Um, then another important thing is how you deal with adds. So you're going to get one big ad. I think this is the big ad, right? Can't even tell. It looks like the big ad. And then you get small ads. Um, I'm just going to use marks for the small ads. So with the small ads and big ads, um, you're going to have a bit of time. So the small ads spawn first. Let's say the small ads spawned in this configuration here. Um, the small ads will spawn first, and then the big ad spawns like a second or two after the small ads become active. Um, it will be indicated by a like blue glowing orb. Um, I'll show you when we look at the fight. But it's important that the closest ads near the big ad get knocked away by something. You can use like a monk ring of peace. So as soon as the monk notices where the big ad spawns, they can ring of peace right behind to knock these two ads a bit um, away. So they're out of the immune circle. Uh, you can use typhoons. Um, anything, anything that knocks, you can use. And you should use to get them out of the immune circle. Then what your blood DKs are going to do, or DKs in general, is grip in the two far ads so let's say this DK grips in this ad, this DK grips in this ad. Um, and ideally, you kill this big ad before these mobs get their first cast. 
To make that a little bit easier, you assign stuns. So let's say you have a, let's see, two paladins. Most traits have two paladins. Um, and like, I don't know, monk. Who else has a stun? DKs have stuns, just single target stuns. Any class with single target stuns, assign them to these adds. So DKs are nice because they can grip, then they can asphyx. Uh, Paladins can stun these. So essentially, you just want to get a stun on each of the adds. Um, and then finish off the big guy. Once big guy dies, you can go ahead and mass grip, or you can slappy hands, which gets all of these adds in. Um, and you just finish them off as they're walking. An important thing that you need to look out for is how you position the, the debuff, the big debuff that makes them take extra damage. So for us, we always made them stand on the inside while the rate stood on the outside. So if you have these two debuffs, one would stand here, other one would stand here, and your raid would follow them from the outside. Right? Um, these mobs are moving inward towards Garrosh, so you essentially want your two debuffs to be leading them and everyone else following instead of your range just like standing here, then constantly having to back up as they move closer. Um, so that was pretty much what we used for positioning the two red circles. Um, and you do that with the big ad also. So that's pretty much all there is to dealing with ads. Um, once you get more comfortable with the fight, you'll be able to like mass grip in ads onto the big ad when it's like kind of low health. So let's say the big ad is at like 50%. 30%, whatever you decide. Um, you can mass grip in everything and deal efficient cleave while finishing off the big ad. The most important thing is just always having the rage debuff um, or the torment debuff on top of whatever you're hitting besides the boss. All right, let's take a look at what this fight looks like in practice. So we also dropped a mark on each of the slices. You can use marks, you can use numbers. Um, I think limit did one, two, three, four. We just use marks and over enough pools, you know which mark is where. Uh, and this is just for dodging. So in total, you will have to deal with six chain breaks. Uh, if you have more DPS, you can get away with just five. Uh, so make sure you have those assignments set up and then healing cooldowns for each of the chain breaks. For DPS cooldowns, just send everything on pull. If you have a Windwalker Monk, they will mostly solo the small adds. Um, but boss, boss damage is the most important thing. Deceptively enough, the damage on the small adds does not matter, generally. So first brand spawns. That blue light over there is where the big ad will spawn. So we want to get a ring of peace on those two ads that are close to it. And the two people who have the torment debuff run to the blue circle. You see me, force over, stand on top of this. The two torments stand in front of the ad. Everyone else is behind or like off to the side. You can see that we hodge that one, hodge that one. And the two tanks are going to grip the far adds in, then group them up. Gripped in, gripped in. All right, everything is grouped. You get a fresh set of brands. They just need to make sure they stand on top of the adds. You cleave everything down. Focus on boss damage while you're cleaving everything down. And this is where you get the first set of chains. So chains start. Um, you want players standing by and ready. And you want the first player to lock gate as soon as possible. Uh, be careful with placing zone or area of effect DRs like barrier, because as soon as you snap the first chain, you will get a set of dodges um, or little blue swirlies that, that you need to move out of. So what we did or tried to do is stand on one side of the barrier, bait the, bait the circles, then move to the other side. 
So everyone stood in. That was a little unlucky for me. Uh, the two brands came out. So you just want to deal with all three of the chain snaps before the cones come out. That's pretty much all the only timing that you have to meet. From there, you're just hitting boss um, and you get a second wave of ads. Second wave of ads, you deal, you deal with it the exact same way as the first one. You notice that the ads, the big ads spawned on the left side. The monk went over and robbed the agonizer away. As soon as torments are out, they stand on top of the overlord and everyone swaps to it, kills it real quick. And you group up the, re the remaining ads and just kill them. Um, once you mass grip, solar beam, super, super good. Um, here you get a dodge, right? As you're supposed to be killing these small ads. So just make sure they're grouped, interrupted, move out for the dodge, then deal with the ads. You're, you're in no rush. You have infinite amount of time to deal with the agonizers. Uh, so just deal boss damage, cleave down the agonizers. All right, when you get to the intermission, you want to assign someone that calls the safe spot. Um, ideally, a ranged DPS who can look at the back of the room constantly. Just whoever on your roster is best at calling safe spots, um, they need to do it because that makes a huge difference. If, if this whole intermission is in the hands of a single player, you will have way less deaths to it than if everyone had to look for themselves. So we stack up, safe spot is called, you move. The way you know which the next safe spot is, um, I hope at some point I look at the back of the room, but at the very back of the room, we were calling markers, but you can also call numbers, um, completely up to you. At the very back of the room, there will be a little, um, like graphic that appears, it's like little red bubbles. In all of the cones, that will have the Encore of Torment in them. Um, then the slice that is safe will not have that extra like little particle effect. Um, kind of hard to explain. Maybe at some point I look at the back of the room, although there's not much point to it for me. Um, but if you look at the back, you'll know what I'm talking about. So first intermission done, right at the very end of the intermission, spread out. As soon as you spread out, um, because as soon as the intermission ends, then you get a set of torments. So you can see it even on these, the animation starts at the back of the room, then progresses forward. So during the intermission, you can tell which of the slices are safe um, and which have ads in them. Then you get a set of ads, you deal with it the exact same way. Just kill the overlord, group everything else on top of it, cleave it down. And yeah, that's pretty much it. This is where you get your second set of chains after this dodge. So the time between the first and second set of chains is very long. Um, so the second set of chains happens at 340, I believe. Um, but then the time between each chain set gets shorter and shorter and shorter. Get brands out, finish off agonizers. You just want to finish off these agonizers before the chains happen. Chains happen, people pick it up. First one lock gates, second one lock gates, third one lock gates, and that's it. Uh, make sure people use personals for chain breaks. There's nothing else that will kill you on this fight. Um, you know, if you move out of everything that's on the ground and stuff like that. But chain breaks are the most dangerous part of this encounter. Um, another set of dodge, you just move to the safe slice. You get another set of adds. This one is standard as well. You just rob away or typhoon away the close one. Brands move on top of the overlord. Leave it down. Um, during this set, you get your fourth set of chains, or third set of chains, rather. Um, 
So you need to make sure that people are dealing with the chains while dealing with the ads. This is a fairly dangerous part of the fight. Um, if you have immunities, um, stuff like that, this set is a pretty good one to use it on because you're dealing with a lot of stuff at the same time. So third set of chains during ads, slightly dangerous. After you kill the overlord, you group everything up. Just look for the safe zone. Um, and then just cleave everything down. Okay, so something that happened right there that I need to point out is the boss before the second dance or the second intermission, it needs to be dragged to the back of the room. You will see here again. When there's eight seconds, about eight seconds on dance two, you take the boss and pull him to the back of the room while everyone just keeps dealing with the agonizers. There goes the tank, and there goes the boss. So what this will actually do is make your fourth set of chains spawn about 20 seconds later than they would if you didn't do that. So you can either get the fourth set of chains at 525 into the fight or at 540 into the fight. Um, and if you're using this priest, for them, the difference is absolutely massive. And making sure that you're able to get the 540 timing is crucial. In this pull, I think we actually messed it up because we didn't pull out the boss either far enough or quick enough, one of those two, and we end up getting the early timings. But normally, if you pull the boss out during before the second dance, you will actually get the later timing. So you will get chains at 540 instead of 525. Finish off these ads before the second dance. Um, and then you just call safe zones. Second dance, same exact as first one. So as you can see, we got this set of chains 530. Um, so if our strategy would have worked, we would have had 10 extra seconds on these chains, but we didn't. Um, so this was a little bit scuffed because we had to wait on our healer to ramp. Um, still managed to get it together. So then you get add spawns. Again, just stun everything. Hit the overlord. Uh, this one, if I remember correctly, is a default set. You just deal with it the same way as you dealt with the other ones. Kill the overlord. Beam them. Then move back. Finish off agonizers. Uh, fairly straightforward. Here you get the fifth set of chains. Um, this one, again, you want to snap as fast as possible. Uh, keep in mind that if you manage to get the 540 timing, then these will be pushed back even further. Uh, so that means that you have time to deal with the agonizers and then with chains. But since our timing got scuffed, we ended up having to deal with them at the same time. Snap chains, finish off agonizers. So something that we actually do here is we CC every single ad, every single agonizer, and we ignore them. So repent, hex, polymorph, uh, incap, paralysis, freezing traps, everything that lasts a minute, you can use on the agonizers. So you CC them and you ignore them. The one that spawns close to the overlord still gets robbed away, so the, their CC doesn't break. But this overlord, you also ignore. There's no reason to kill it. He doesn't do anything. Um, only reason to kill it in all the other times it spawns is because when he gets to the center, his aura expands like almost to the edge of this platform. But you will see here that we ignore the overlord completely. Just let him walk to the center. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't do damage. He just walks. That, that's it. There's nothing else that this guy does. All the ads are CC'd. Uh, we don't want to kill those because by the time the CC wears off, the fight's going to enrage anyway. So we just want to kill the boss. You get your last set of chains here. You just need to deal with them. Um, this is fairly difficult because you get dodge. So you just want to wait out the dodge, then you deal with chains. First one and second one were actually able to break during the dodge. Um, and third one goes. 
So as you can see, the Overlord reached the center and his aura expanded all the way to the edge. But if you CC all the adds right when they spawn, they will be out of that circle. So you just hit boss. And then you get your third intermission and you need to kill the boss before this intermission ends. That's essentially what you have to do. Um, so depending on your raised DPS, you can do this with one set earlier. Um, it doesn't really matter. For us, it was really close, but CCing those adds and ignoring them gained us a lot of boss damage. So that is Soul Render. Um, pretty fun fight. If you have a Windwalker Monk, make sure they're in. They will solo the Agonizers for you. They deal so much damage to them. It's absolutely insane. Everything else, just bring your best players.